Thank you, Paul. Pastor Paul, I really appreciate that. It's wonderful to be honoured in my hometown. You know, um, uh, I've been ministering in Adelaide for so many years, and uh, initially it was very tough to break into uh, a revival atmosphere in Adelaide. I mean, there have been some moves of God in the 80s, and I've been a part of that in the, in the early 80s. And in the, in the 70s, there was a charismatic movement, which I witnessed that as a child. Uh, but um, seeing God come move in Adelaide again in the, in the last several years here and in a field of dreams and other places, it's not just about our church. Uh, it comes with a price, it does, to be able to, to step into a realm to uh, release the glory. And uh, you, you, when I say come to the price, you do get resistance, especially in your hometown. And some of you, how many people when they wake up, they might get 444 or on your phone or you might see 444 often. How many people see that on their phone? Well, it can be many things. It can be when you have a, a dream of 444 or if you see something in the natural that's 444 on your phone or a number plate. Um, it can mean resurrection of dominion, mean having authority. You've been raised up in this natural realm and have, taking dominion in this realm and activating the kingdom realities and bringing it into the natural realm. I'm just going to just, later on, I'm going to get us to activate something. But 444 can also mean John 444, a prophet's not on in his hometown. So um, if you're getting resistance with your family, well, be encouraged because that's normal. Because if you're actually getting a breakthrough in your own town, when you go offshore, like what you've seen demonstrated here, uh, you know, with, with Paul Toddle and, uh, and Todd Weatherly in, in Field of Dreams, myself and others, and you see God break out. When we go offshore, oh my goodness, it's like a holy storm. Because people perceive you and they receive, uh, they receive somebody who comes, a stranger, somebody who's sent to another nation they receive and they receive an impartation because they perceive them to be a man of God or a prophet like the woman of the world when he started Jesus started to prophesy to her she said I perceive that you are a prophet and things start to manifest things start start to started to activate when she actually had that revelation that Jesus was a prophet and then she had a revelation that Jesus was the Messiah and then she went to Samaria and then she actually became a revivalist because the whole town was introduced to Jesus. She introduced the whole town that came out to Jesus Christ. So that's a revivalist, would you say? Amen. So what I'm going to do just for a little bit, I'm going to do some ministry first and then it's going to share some stuff and I'm going to active, we're going to activate something because I believe some of you are never going to be the same again after today. Some of you are dealing with an orphan spirit. And this has been my, my experience dealing with an orphan spirit. Like taking it on and having blind spots. But at the moment, I just feel to just do some demonstration. Are you okay with that? It's good to be back in Adelaide, but I don't like the cold. <laughs> at the moment, America is nice and warm. So I'm going back over there in a couple of weeks, which I can wear a singlet, you know. First, we're just going to, sorry, you should be, he prefers me in a jacket. Many people do, by the way. But like I said, I've actually has, have lost a bit of weight. I'm down, I'm down to two chins now. But, but we're going to just engage and not focus on ourselves and what we look like. <laughs> we're going to focus on Jesus and we're going to come into that place of intimacy and then we're going to I'm just going to do some demonstration because demonstration in the soulish realm always fails us and it doesn't work all right we want to give God the glory and become intimate with him just for a little bit I know we've been worshiping but just for a moment I just want to just give honor to the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit we just honor you right now we acknowledge you we thank you that you're the only evidence here on earth that can reveal the Father and reveal the Son. Holy Spirit, you are God. You are a person. You reveal Jesus. And Holy Spirit, we worship you today. We, Lord, show us the intimacy 
Show us what it is to be intimate with the Father, Heavenly Father. Shakarama ruko sike. Morumo sike relelele. Shakarama maruko sirelele. Lord Jesus, we worship you. Holy Spirit, release the revelatory understanding right now. Sharama maruko sike relelele. Jesus, we magnify your name. There's no other name under, he under heaven. There's no other name under heaven how we can be saved. Lord Jesus, right now, Father, we just thank you for, Lord, there's a door standing open for heaven. There's a door standing open, a door standing open, and it's actually heaven's door. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you're releasing the river of God. Ezekiel 47, the river of God's coming from the temple and it's been released. And I thank you, Father, that, Lord, you're touching people right now. The Spirit of God, the river of God is flowing through this place. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Who's, who's sensing waves of God's presence right now? Some of you, this is good. Just close, everybody close your eyes at the moment. For the moment, just close your eyes and we just release right now. Father, release your river, waves of glory. Here it comes. Here it comes. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to do some demonstration here and just release some prophetic words, but I'm going to do uh, some dream interpretations, just demonstration of dream interpretation. Now, a lot of you have heard me go on about some some protocols of when I do this, so that uh, I want I, you know I need to qualify some stuff. But I'm not going to go into too much today because some of you probably get sick of hearing me saying it. How that, um, you know, there's different levels of the prophetic. But if you have any problems, I'm happy to talk to you afterwards. But I want to interpret some dreams, a couple of dreams today, this morning. And I want to do some short dreams, very short demonstrations, okay? So if you have a dream that's 10 to, or a vision, it could be even a vision, dreams and visions. So if you have a dream or a vision that goes for 10 or 15 seconds... I like to give you the opportunity to interpret it. Now, if it's long, I apologize in advance. I'm not going to interpret it. Just for those who are new, I'm not going to interpret very long dreams because we don't want to get bogged down and there's, uh, we want to move on. But I want to do some short demonstrations today and uh, activate something on a couple of you people today. So is any, anyone here has had a really short vision or dream? Is anybody here? I will read it because it was a while ago. There was a bunch of us swimming in the ocean and there were these really gigantic waves and we were in the swells and then a wave took us out to the beach. But it was fantastic. It was supposed to be scary, but it wasn't. And one didn't even have to swim well because the waves did it all for you. Oh, that's really good. I like that dream. It's very short and, um, and also it's a good dream. <laughs> now, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? So... You're in, the, you're in the beach, was it the beach? Yeah, and you, you actually went out and there was waves and it took you and you were riding the waves. Is that pretty much what's happened? But you, were, you should be scared, but you weren't. Yes, because we were right far into the ocean and it was very deep and the swells were huge. So from the sides of the swells, we should have been scared, but we weren't. It was just exhilarating and the wave just took us to the beach. Well, that's exciting. You know, the ocean can represent... Humanity can represent the world because in between nations, uh, obviously there's there's water a lot. Of, there's a body of water, but it can represent the world. It can represent uh, souls. It can represent humanity. But this is a good dream because I don't know whether you're doing. Are you about to do any mission trips, or you do any mission trips? You're going to be doing anything like that, or do you? Are you? Do you go? Have you been anywhere to do evangelism? No. 
So you don't have you done any evangelism in your life? Yeah, some, but not on uh, mission trips like that. Do you have any desire to do anything like that? Some. <laughs> I take that as a no. <laughs> But <laughs> so you can be very encouraged with this dream because what it means is it, it means that there's going to be a move of God now whether it's going to be offshore or in another nation right it means that uh, you're obviously arriving away which is a huge swells that's taking place and there's some pretty interesting things happening in the world right now and when it looks like there's disaster about to take place or there's a lot of concern us believers need to be encouraged because God always, excuse the pun, but God always out trumps the enemy, right? And, um, and when things are very scary and you can, you feel like, because the media, that's why I don't read the news, I don't watch the news because the media always stirs up fear. And I do believe that there's going to be, by this, this dream, because I had to ask some questions, that there's going to be a revival and move of God. And that comes out of some stuff, some stuff that can be scary in the world, some th events that can happen. But out of that, there's going to be a move of God. All right? We can't look at anything half empty. We need to look at everything half full. Okay? So God's, I see that you're coming into a place where you're going to be a part of a move of God, a revival. All right? So that's a very good, because... Things do look a bit scary in the world. Like I said, in the dream, you, you, you actually saw that it was the swelling, the swells of, I should say, of, of the, the, the waters was scary. But you, you, actually ride, you actually ride that wave, you actually surf that wave. And that means that you're actually going to be a part of a revival that's probably going to take place if you're not into mission, the mission field. You're gonna, it's going to take place here. All right. Sorry? A person's on leadership does that affect the dream because it can be not just for a person it may be for a for a church or those kinds of things it can be it can be and an, an, it could be to do with the church where other people get sent out now and I'm I'm sure there's a lot of people who are sent out or have been sent out here as, as missionaries to go and release uh, revival or go to release uh, and surf the wave of God but I just see that this is something here with you that that you're going to get caught up here, but then I'm, I'm seeing that you, there's probably a gift of teaching and the gift of impartation because I see, I'm seeing that, that um, I'm actually getting visions now of you actually teaching. But when you actually teach, there's going to be an impartation of, of like a revival mantle. So there's some, I'm not sure if you studied a lot of the revival histories. I don't know if you've done that, but I'm seeing that you're going to tap into the, you're going to tap into some of the like the old wells that were welling up in the past when it comes to the Zusa Street things like that in fact um, I'm seeing that you're going to be a cultivating a move of God even in your family as well because I'm seeing some unsaved people coming into the kingdom in fact what I'm seeing now is some unsaved people there's going to be some reconciliation there's going to be a reunion, right? Uh, even offshore, I'm seeing that now. I'm actually getting a vision right now where there's unsaved people, some people that are that are being embittered, and people that are that are hard in their hearts are going to come back. And you're going to, while you're surfing that wave, there's going to be an impartation. There's going to be deliverance, like when Peter spoke to Cornelius, he just opened his mouth. And then there was an impartation when he just opened his mouth. He didn't even have to lay hands on him. And I see you actually going back to a country temporarily to actually, it's like a Moses thing where you're delivering people. There's people getting set free. So does that make sense now? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. A, t a dream is like a tap dripping. But when I when I start to activate it and we can all do this it goes deeper and deeper and you can actually see more and then I get visions on top of of what I see in the dream so and sometimes I do get the angel that stands with me and release visions even detailed stuff that gets released and I just want to pray for you and I want to pray that you have this ability to there's going to be a time where you're going to go back you're going to be 
your cup is going to be so filled, you're going to be like a sprinkler, right? And you're going to be surfing. There's going to be a move of God. Something's activated here where you're going to surf and you're going to actually bring an impartation, like I said, to your family. There's going to be some long lost some time. There's going to be a, a reunion and you're actually going to actually speak into their lives. And even the, the grief of death is going to come off of them. Right? Because even, even nieces and nephews that you haven't seen are actually going to be sparked up and they're going to be, there's going to be a hunger that's going to be released to them. So we're going to pray. I want you to reach your hands out to our sister. And God's releasing something right through the vertebrae as well. The fire of God's all over you right now. We thank you, Father, there's a door standing open in heaven, a heavenly door. And we thank you, Father, there's, a, there's angels ascending and descending upon this mighty woman of God. We thank you for releasing the fire of God. I'm seeing there's a, there's a fire going up your spine, and, I, and it's, actually, it's actually the fire of God. There's giving not only a, a, a posture in the spirit, but it's also bringing healing. Whew, God's healing your back. You're releasing divine order right through the top part of your spine, right through the, the center of your back. God's releasing, Lord, supernatural authority right through her body right now. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. That you're releasing divine order right through her head as well. Here it comes. God's giving us supernatural strength where God's are bringing a power of agreement to you and also your husband here. Okay, we, pro we prophesy divine order over the, your husband. We thank you for, there's, there's the power of agreement. There's the enemies that actually try to hold you back through false responsibility. Father, release right now into her mind the revelation of Jesus Christ where she can go to the next level. The power of God's so strong, it's just it's completely saturating your life right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus, just stay there for a moment because the power of God is just getting stronger and stronger. And it's actually going right through your I just see, I'm seeing a vision of the fire of God is running up and down your back. Whew, glory. Glory, glory. The, the blonde lady here with the scarf, can you stand up for a minute? Just want to pray. Just want to release an authority over you so you, you can, I, I just see the God wants to, I don't know why, but I'm just seeing, and I'm seeing this in a vision beforehand when I was sitting over here before earlier. I don't know why they just, just see something's pulling your back, right? And I see it as a muscle. It's a muscle thing that's been, it's been playing out. It's nothing too serious, but it's been, been something that's been really affecting your back. But we're going to break that off, all right, so that you can, you can be free from, from any pain, all right? And the glory of God's all over you because I see that you're, you're called to be a seer because you actually... Uh, you get a lot of, and, and in the past, it's like, uh, you might think it was a woman's intuition, but it's actually, you actually are a seer. Yeah, you're quite prophetic. But the enemy's been trying to cause chaos through the children, and it's, and, it's, and it's actually distracting you. And there's nothing wrong with the children. They're great children, but I just see there's been chaos through, especially with, the. I'm just going to release supernatural ability for your son to learn right you have a son don't you yeah and i'm going to prophesy the learning ability is going to be on on turbo because the enemy is trying to knock his confidence when it comes to learning we're just going to break that off and you know what i'm talking about because the enemy's been trying to cause grief and over you over the situation it's causing a bit of chaos and you've been meditating on it a lot but the enemy is actually a liar and we're going to dismantle that off your son Amen. And we just, I prophesy, even that you're a, I see that you're a seer, the family is a seer, even your, you have a daughter, 
there's a seer as well. All right. I see that she's a she taps into the realms where she see angels. And uh, I just thank I thank God that she has the gift to be able to touch. She's actually the one that has the authority, and she 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 she's the one that has the authority when it comes to even her, her brother. She she she's actually she knows what she wants, and that's very exciting because she's actually going to be a leader. And she's a seer, but she's also going to be a leader, and she's going to have authority. She's going to actually tap into, into. Uh, she's going to be ministering to kings, and I see that she's going to be ministering to leaders. But you need to to keep speaking this see as you learn and you grow into the seer gifting. You're going to impart into your daughter, but your son as well. We just prophesy, and I want you to put your hands out. We're going to prophesy the learning ability over your son is going to be completely switched on right now there's nothing serious but he's actually there is some there's been some, there's been a heavy weight over him when it comes to learning we break that off right now through the power of the blood any lying spirits that's trying to speak into his life negativity and and, and even fear we break that off off him right now and we reverse any curses any generational curses from the any from the grandparents we break it off right now I see that and we decree, we reverse curses because we're no longer bound by the curse of the law. We reverse them and we release life and blessing over your son and over your daughter and over your husband. And we just release life, supernatural life. And we prophesy the muscles in the back are coming in the divine order. There's some muscles that come in, that, are, that there's been some pain in your back that actually even causes, you know, even sometimes your neck and your head, there's some pain. There's like headaches, migraines. And I'm saying this because I'm seeing it in a vision right now and, and we I don't think we know each other that well we no so you believe that's the holy spirit so we re- we reverse curses right now off this woman of god and we decree divine order through her mind through her back thank you lord you're turning the light on the eyes of her heart are opening up right now <laughs> in jesus name and we thank you that she can see and when she does right now god's saying to you you're going to see what my heavenly, what, this is what Jesus is saying. You're going to see what my heavenly Father does. You're going to go around one, it's actually John 5, excuse me. I only do what I see my Father does. And you're going to see it and you're going to decree it in Jesus' name. And Father, I just release pain-free zone over this woman of God in Jesus' name. Amen. What I want to do now, I just... We're going to do some activation. You're okay if you want to get, you guys, I really, I think they deserve a round of applause, don't you think? Thank you, guys. Be blessed. We, we might need you to at the end if that's all right, but yeah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> what I want to do is just um, activate something quickly today. And um, I've been, uh, been on the road a lot. This is one of mine. Open one, good. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Isn't God good? I, you know, I, I'm just an average Joe Blow, and I'm, you know, I'm just Adam. But it's great to be connected and be part of the kingdom and be seated in heavenly places with Christ. Amen. And it's, and it's a gift. And I just want to activate some today. And I just want to just quickly share something that's been on my heart that's been, that, you know, and I, want to, oh, no, I don't want you to see this as a criticism. Okay. And we've been, I've been talking about it with others. There's, there's, there's a lot of Prophetic ministries today are releasing words on online every day. These prophetic words. And then there's another word, and every day there's getting these prophetic words that have been released online. Now I don't want to be critical because a lot of them are good, but I just want to just spell it out today that they're not necessarily prophetic words. They're words of encouragement. Okay, they're words of encouragement, and you know. I just want you to understand that, and I want to be critical, but it is words of encouragement, and they can, they can give you encouragement, they can bring life. But the prophetic minute, there's going to be a prophetic ministries 
They're going to be released. They're actually going to be moving in the realm, the apostolic realm of signs and wonders. It's one thing to give a prophetic word, but it's another thing to demonstrate it with signs, wonders, miracles, power. And I'm not saying that every time I prophesy or pray for somebody, someone gets healed. Sometimes I pray for somebody to get worse. Sometimes that can happen. If you're in ministry, that can happen. But I pray for a lot of people and I've seen some outstanding, off the charts, crazy miracles that God has done, not Adam. Right? But there's a difference between an encouragement, encouraging word and a prophetic word because the prophetic word is confirmed with signs and wonders. And um, there's some false teaching and a lot of you are probably aware of, it, of the false teaching that, and, and funny that you were talking about it this morning, Paul. But false teaching out there of saying that everything's done. You don't need to do anything. Everything's done through the power of the cross and you don't need to do anything. Now that is true when it comes to, to salvation. Did you know that? It's a free gift. You don't have to do it. You can't do anything to have eternal life. To have salvation. You, you have to receive it as a gift. But when it comes to the destiny, you do have to do some things. When it comes to fulfilling the will of God and the, the destiny that God has for you, you do need to act upon it. See, it says in 1 Corinthians 4.20, The kingdom of heaven is not a matter of talk, but it's a matter of power. Have you, have you read that scripture? 1 Corinthians 4.20, the kingdom of heaven is not a matter of talk, but power. And I'm believing, I believe in positive thinking. Now, you know, even the world teach, teaches on positive thinking. I believe in positive thinking. We need to train our thought pattern to be in the word. And even the world do teach about thinking on positive things. But if you start thinking on positive things and constantly confess it, it's not necessarily going to manifest. You actually need to act upon it. You do need to act out uh, uh, what God gives you and the downloads that God gives you. You know, the world does do this outside the counsel of God. Did you know that? There's a lot of successful business people out there. You know, there's one person, Steve Jobs. He's passed away now. But... He had an incredible mind and he stepped out on what he had, what, what the downloads, the vision. He was a visionary. So let me just say this. If I went back 200 years in the past and I tried to explain to somebody that there's going to be this rectangular device that's flat and there's going to be an image on it and I'm going to speak to the person on the other side of the planet, they're going to go, you're completely mad. Isn't that true? You're completely crazy. And 50 years ago. But they're going to also say to you, that is impossible. That's completely impossible. Isn't that true? But someone like Steve Jobs, and because of technology, he steps out. He had a download. He had a vision. And he acted upon it. And he was fearless. And he was aggressive too. But he was fearless. And he stepped out upon it. And look what we got today. It's amazing, isn't it? And a lot of Christians are actually, you know, a lot of believers, I should say, are in fear. Fearful, when I say fear, fear in stepping out on what God gives them. Am I making sense? See, we need to be not, and I'm saying this for myself, everything, you know, someone said to me once, whatever someone's preaching on, God's actually dealing with them at the moment. <laughs> it's true. And because um, I've been, you know, we're all in the same boat, are walking through this. I'm going from strength to strength. Hallelujah. Um, I, I say by faith I'm a man of God. I'm not a very good Christian, but I'm a son. Amen? Trying to be a Christian is pretty useless, really. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's too hard. I can't do it. But I'm a son, and I actually love being disciplined by the Lord. Because that means I'm a leg legitimate child of God. It says that in Hebrews 12. I'm, I'm, I'm the real deal because the Lord disciplines me and I love it and I share in his holiness when he does it. 
and I just sit there and say it's all done and I don't have to do anything anymore. Otherwise, you're going to stare at your belly button and probably pass away one day. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> so we can't let the external world around us affect our internal thoughts. All right? And there's a man, you know, I believe God's raising up believers in these days. And it's already happened. I'll give you an example. A man called R.G. Latorno. How many people have heard of R.G. Latorno? He's a man who wrote the book, Mover of Men and Mountains. Have you heard of that? All right. He's a man that actually understood spiritual principles. He, he actually invented, he, he got downloads from the Lord and he invented stuff. You know the little cart that pulls the massive jumbo jet along? The electric wheel that's in the car. He invented that. Do you know the, you know the, um, the oil riggers that are offshore? They're actually in the ocean. He invented that. Do you know the tree lobbing machinery? He invented that. The excavators, the actual, it used to be caterpillar. He actually invented that. But he understood spiritual laws. He gave 90% of his tithing to God. Sorry, he gave 90% of his wealth as a tithe to God. 90% of his tithing, which is, that's 9%. <laughs> sorry. He gave 90% of his wealth. He tithed it to the Lord. And he understood he was fearless and he stepped out. And, you know, he, in the last century, the, his, he was worth a half a billion dollars. That's, that's a couple of bucks, isn't it? And it's not about money, all right? It's about having dominion. It's about having dominion. Because R.G. Latorno, I believe he understood what it is to tap into the God's ways. And he actually knew what it was to tap into the ancient paths. You're probably thinking, what do you mean by the ancient paths? Well, it does mention it in Jeremiah chapter 6, 16. So this is the word of the Lord. Stand at the crossroads and look and ask for the ancient paths. Walk in it and you will find rest in it. What's the ancient paths? Paths. What are the ancient paths? Is I this is this there's different levels of what it is, and I won't go into it, but I believe the ancient past is actually finding out, going in the spirit, having a relationship, tapping into the ways of God and finding out who you are and who you were before the foundations of the earth. Did you know that? Jeremiah. 1 5, when the Lord spoke to Jeremiah, he said, Before you were formed, before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I, you were set apart. I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. So before Jeremiah was born, he was set apart, and God had the plan. And, you know, he appointed Jeremiah. Isn't that amazing? A friend of mine, a good close friend of mine, he spent time with the Lord. He does spend time with the Lord regularly. And he had this encounter of Jesus. And the Lord spoke to him. And he said, I want you to get, me, get to know me more. And he said, well, I thought I did. <laughs> I'm... He goes, no, no, no. Before I sent you to planet Earth, we were good friends. We really were good close, good friends. Isn't it amazing? You know, I had to change my thinking and I'm just going to share some of my heart here of some of my recent experiences. 
we all to a measure have an orphan spirit we all have have suffered with that haven't we all right and um somebody close to me ripped me off with a lot of money someone close to me had and it was a trauma in my life i got completely ripped off and i've come to the point where i have you know i had to but i have forgiven them and um in fact i have a lot of mercy uh, over that person but i was always focusing on that problem and i had to shut that door i had to aggressively shut that door the lord challenged me and said you're focusing on the problem rather than the solution rather than on me you're focusing on that person what he did rather than me and sometimes when we focus and not saying sometimes but all the time when we focus on something we actually it does affect our whole body emotions and spirit it can you can watch you can watch uh, a romantic movie and you can get all that <laughs> and you get teary you get a lump in your throat you, you know what i mean and you can watch a horror movie and you're like a poodle in the thunderstorm and you're freaking out and you're actually the laws of attraction because at night you <laughs> when you're in bed you know what i mean and then you can watch a success story and you get inspired we can channel into these different type of channels and it can affect your whole being and i was constantly thinking about this issue that's happened to me where this close person had ripped me off financially and it actually was a a checkpoint in my life that affected me and i always used to think back about it i always meditate when if i did i shouldn't have done that if only if i did this and as I'm more I meditate on it, it starts to affect my life. And um, I had to actually change that. But the Lord, I had this encounter, and I feel safe because we're all friends here, and we're family. Because when you're with, you are my true spiritual family. Did you know that? Some of you are probably going, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> but you are. So I can just because Jesus said, "Who are my brothers and my mothers?" those who hear the word of god and obey it are my true brothers and mothers and we are part of the spiritual family we are part of the kingdom of heaven and we have to get used to each other for eternity isn't that true but i had this encounter of um of jesus a vision encounter of jesus came to me and he had a burning torch and he had a burning torch and there was this old shanty with this person who ripped me off he was sitting in it this person that actually physically made my life chaos was was sitting in it and he had this burning torch and he said you ready to do this I said, do what he said put your hand on my fist and we're going to burn this shanty down and i thought well that doesn't sound like you lord you're going to burn this person alive and he goes no he goes this is not the person this is the demon masquerading as that person so I burnt this thing it completely was engulfed and then I turned and I saw the real person sitting there in peace and then I crossed over into another dimension he took me by the hand and it was completely bright and I saw these thousands all I can explain it's probably tens of thousands of trunks old trunks with gold bricks in them like i thought they're bigger than normal gold bars these ones these are huge this this is a lot of well and i saw thousands of them and he said to me you think this is my riches don't you i just didn't say anything he said you think this is my riches but it's actually not this is my provision for you and this is a means to an end for the kingdom my kingdom my true riches is resting and being secure in my eternal love that nothing can get in the way of that is resting in my eternal love that you are my son and see that blows the orphan spirit out of the water would you say that's the true riches is being secure in that see when my son goes to 
helps himself to the fridge. We've got one. We've got a son left in the house. We're nearly empty nest. We're nearly an empty nest couple, but we've got Zach at home. And he helps himself to the fridge. But I don't go, hey, what are you doing? I don't question him because he's entitled to it. Because I love him, he's my son, and he can feel secure to help himself to the fridge. And that's exactly how God sees us. Amen? Now, before I finish up, I just want to do some activation. Is that okay? This is the essence of how God wants us to walk in. This is this to me, this is part of the ancient past. Going back, see, I know my destiny. I, I'm, I'm actually a multi talented guy. I can play musical instruments, I'm an artist, I can be a comedian. <laughs> I can do a lot of things, but I know my mandate that God's called me to do. And I can harness all that into that one mandate. You know, I can use my talents, but sometimes I get tempted that okay, I could go to Hollywood and be a comedian. But the, but I know that that's not my destiny. And my destiny is to be a prophet to the nations. That's what my calling is, to equip the body, to equip the bride, to be prophetic and look beautiful for the, and be a landing pad for Jesus. Amen? And... Um, but a lot of people get caught up in what, first of all, of what they need or what they want. And people get caught up about what am I supposed to do before they actually know the true riches. It's like kind of when you get a one-year-old child on its birthday and you give them a gift that's more mesmerised about the wrapping paper. And they're not seeing what's behind the wrapping paper. There is a gift out there and it's free and, and it's actually the kingdom of heaven. And God wants to actually set some of you free today. He wants you to be set free from some of you may to a measure have an orphan spirit. And I just want to do something. If we can get the guys back on just a little bit, just on back on, on the, the synthesizer and if, 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 if that can happen. Is that all right? Is Brianna here? Beautiful. Thank you. And I had to deal with this myself. See, I'm, I'm sharing from my own heart because, you know, God wants me to go to another level. And, and it's not about being successful in this world, but it's about equipping the body and it's about for me bringing the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven and have other nations other leaders that are uh, that are bound by principalities and who are controlled by demonic powers I, w I want to have them to look and see what God's doing in my life and say there's no God like the God of Adam and I say this because this is going to happen corporately God's going to actually raise up people to actually tap in to the ingenious mind of God and release inventions out of see what happens is the the confidence the confidence of being a son the confidence having the confidence of being in God's eternal love gives you the strength to be able to activate and act upon what God gives you, the downloads, that gives you these, these promises that He's showing you. Some of you have got so many ideas. How many people have got ideas here and they actually haven't actually activated it? People here got so many ideas. I've got to do that one day. God's given me this vision, but that hasn't actually manifested yet. How many people have done that? Or how many people have had that? You put your hands up high. See, there's a lot of you. Sorry? Yeah, we're going to release that. So I just want everybody to stand for a minute.
And there's a few things, there's a few things I want you to do, but just first of all, now we're all standing together. Some of you feel you may not need to do this, that's fine. But maybe you can, you might want to do it just to encourage the person next to you, maybe your wife or, or someone you know that, that's struggling. But what I want you to do is just, just close your eyes and just fix your eyes on the author and the finish of our faith, which is Jesus. Just close your eyes and meditate on the Lord for a moment. Holy Spirit, we worship you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We, we thank you, Holy Spirit. You're a canopy over this place right now. Holy Spirit, nurture us right now. Minister to us, Holy Spirit. And what I want you to do is just use your imagination. That past issue in your life, that peg, it might be somebody has ripped you off, somebody that has abused you, somebody that has hurt you. It might be something that has traumatized you, a car accident. It might be a near-death experience, but it wasn't pretty. It might be, you know, uh, from, you might be from abusive family. What I want you to do is just, at the moment, I want you to go to that place in your mind. Go to that place in your mind. And I want you to imagine there's a door in front of it and you're shutting that door. Just do that right now. Just imagine the door, you actually physically shutting that door in front of those issues. You're shutting the door. So what you're doing is you're not giving any more permission for those demonic powers to torment that mind path that you've had. You're shutting the door of the mind path that's been giving permission for torment. So I just want you to repeat after me, Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to set me free. I shut the door on that trauma. I shut the door on that abuse. I shut the door on anxiety. And Lord Jesus, I thank you there's a door standing open in heaven. And I receive you, and I thank you for filling my mind with your glory in Jesus' name. And what we're going to do now, and I want you, it says in the Psalms 100, we come to the gates with thanksgiving. And then we enter the courts with praise. Now, some of you are going to be set free. You are set free now. You're already set free in the spirit when it comes to the word of the Lord. But this is going to be, this is going to be a manifestation of this today. So what we're going to do is now that you've shut the door and now Jesus is saturating your mind, all the pathways of your mind, we're going to thank Him. I just want you to thank Him. Now this is not hype. You really thank Him and mean it with your heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, saints. Thank you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that the door's closed. We thank you, Father, that I've removed all the... You have removed all that past trauma. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have come to set the captives free. We come to the gates of thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you. You're such a good God. You're such a good God. You're such a good God. And what I want to do now, and I want you to just, some of you might not want to do this. That's fine. But I want you to, we're going to praise God really loud. Because it says, we come to the gates with thanksgiving and we enter the courts with praise. And if you're doing it without really believing it, then it's hype. But God wants you to, 
to actually praise Him that you are free from this past trauma. You are no longer bound by the curse of the law. And when you praise Him, thank Him and praise Him for what God's given you. All those inventions that God's given you, those the promises that He's given you. Some of you have unfulfilled promises that this past issue has been holding it back. God wants you to praise Him and thank Him and go into the courts and take the documents, take the court papers, which is the Word of God, the promises, because every promise is yes and amen, and you need to get excited. And I see, and that's what all part of us channeling in. It's like when you're channeling into a movie, you're channeling into something else. What we're doing, we're channeling, channeling into the real door, which is Jesus. He is the door. So we're going to praise Him right now. Hallelujah. Father, we praise You. We thank You, Lord that Jesus is the door. We thank You, Lord God, that we are set free. I thank You that we are set free from every curse, every trauma. And I thank You, Lord, that every promise is yes and amen. Lord, I thank You, Lord, for the inventions. I thank You, Lord, that Your destinies unlocked upon these people right now in Jesus, Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> In Jesus' name, Lord, I thank You. Just believe it when you praise Him. You become conceived with the promises of God. You conceived like a pregnant woman. You conceived and you're pregnant and you're giving birth right now. Some of you are about to give birth. Shara <laughs> mama just worship Him in spirit and truth right now. Keep praising Him, but worship Him. Lord, I thank You, Lord, for the promises have been unlocked. I thank You, Lord, You came to set the captives free. I thank You, Lord Jesus, we can enter into the courts of heaven and we can praise You because every promise is yes and amen. You've released it today. Father, You released the destiny that You have for me. I thank You that the door of trauma is shut. I thank You the door of poverty is shut. Lord, I thank You that I'm no longer giving headspace to that person. I'm no longer giving headspace to the person who traumatized me, who abused me. I'm no longer leasing out my brain to that person. But Lord, I'm focusing on You. My mind is completely fixed on You, Lord Jesus, and You're saturating the pathways of my mind. And I thank You, Lord, the pathways are coming into streamlined revelation of Jesus Christ. The image of God. <laughs> Whoa. 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 Rapa masikere. See, I act upon, you know, something amazing happened to me. And this is it's not about stuff, it's not about the money, but it's about taking dominion. I had a vivid dream after this and, I, and God gives us what we need and, and I had this dream of this office chair beautiful leather office chair and inside the crack of the chair I pulled out a wad of money and I thought wow and I actually it was so vivid I woke up in bed and it was about 4am and I started decreeing. I started getting excited with that. I said, Lord, I thank you. I know it's not about money. It's not about stuff. But Lord, that chair represents the office of a prophet. Authority in the office. Because it was an office chair. It represented the authority. Because chair can mean authority. Because we're seated in heavenly places. Is that right? Chair means authority. And in that authority and in the office of the prophet, God will provide. And would you believe the day I woke up and I started getting excited and decreeing it, somebody gave me a large chunk of money that day. Someone gave me a large chunk of money that day because I got so excited like we were doing today. Now I was getting excited. I said, thank you, Lord. It's already done. But I acted upon it and I started getting excited and I started decreeing it and I started seeing a manifestation within hours. Now, it's not about blabbing it and grabbing it. Sometimes it might take longer for some things. 
but this is an example how we can govern the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And I had the authority to do that out of a non-orphan spirit. I had authority to do it out of being a son and being secure with my heavenly Father. And it gave me the confidence to help myself to the fridge. <laughs> Amen. Bless you guys.